One of our new features in the row settings for Optimize Press is the ability to add full width background images to each individual row. So no matter how many rows you have on your page, your template, you can now add a background to each of those rows. So we jump into the live editor. And if we scroll and we'll pick, let's just pick this same row here, go to edit, go on down, we've got background image from here. So here we can choose to select the file. So I've chosen my image. Now you have to bear in mind when using images is the size of the image. So if we just let this set this to center, it's only going to display the image based off the image width. This image is 800 pixels, so it's pretty small in regards to the full page template. We can choose to stretch that image here as well, and we also sort of tile it the same settings. I'll show you both in a second. We have the option as well to add a overlay to the image. So if we wanted to, we could add a slightly dark color and then adjust this opacity which overlays the image. So if I just drop this in, you can see there, there's the image gone in and it's got that overlay over it. And you can see it's not full width at the moment. So if we go and edit it again, then we can choose to stretch this image and it'll stretch the full width of that page template that allows. Now this template is actually set, um, it's slightly reduced here on the sides, you can see but we've instantly added this image in, we've added an overlay to it, so it looks slightly different than what it would, would with just an image in place. So it saves you having to take this into an editor and put your own overlay over these images. And you can increase or decrease the opacity of that color that you overlay. If I go back and switch it to white, from here I'll just choose white, might uh, increase the opacity a little bit. Save and close. There you can see now we've got a lighter image. Let me show you this on a full row page. So this is a page with a full row image in it. And what I'll do is I'll add another image uh, below. So I've added the image there of the coastline in, and I'll press update, and I'll save and close. Reload this page. And there you can see now we've got two different images in the rows. Now one thing to bear in mind, I'll show you this, when I increase the size of this browser, um, you can see what happens. The image itself, the top one is only 1600 pixels wide. And if I increase this and keep increasing it, you'll suddenly see my background color is now showing in the page. Both of these images are 1600 pixels wide. So one thing to note is that if you know the size of the browsers that mostly use on your website, you might then want to create your images to make sure they fit to those browser sizes. This one is 1600 pixels. So if you're seeing these red bars on the side, it's because the image itself is not big enough to cover the width of the browser. Whereas if the browser size was down here, you can also see the image fits in perfectly in that space. Now you could go and choose the cover and stretch option, but bear in mind it's going to stretch the picture, so you're not going to be able to see the detail like this. You'll actually just sort of see the horizon, for example, because it stretches the picture to fit within the space of the browser. So it's worth playing around with it. Just note if you start seeing these colors down the side, or if you have a background color, or your image isn't stretching, so it might just be white, it's probably the size of your image is not wide enough for the browser you're testing on. One thing you can do is obviously find out your browser sizes for your most visited traffic inside Google Analytics. Something like that will tell you what browser size is mostly used by your visitors. So from there you could probably engage what type of image size you need to use on your pages. So really this is it. It's now a real easy way for you to add these images into your pages. Again, we can play around with opacity on these. You can see I've added quite a dark opacity on that. The more you increase it, the darker it's going to get. So if you reduce the opacity down, it makes it clearer. And then if you increase it, it obviously strengthens the color showing there. So if we jump back into the row, and here if I increase this more, it's gonna um, increase the strength of the black color 
making it harder to see the image behind, but that's great if you want to lay some white text over the top of it. It will look really good on that image. So that is the background row settings that you can apply to any of your rows now, giving your pages much more engaging. Maybe you can even highlight certain call to action areas. You could put different um, pattern background colors on rows so you can highlight a button that's maybe sitting in front of the image, but it really allows you to add some beautiful styles to your pages.